Welcome to Scrubcast, where we explore clinical, translational, and health services research from Stanford University's Department of Surgery through conversations with the authors. I'm Rachel Baker. Today, our topic spans surgical oncology, reconstructive surgery, and innovation as we look at a recent paper published in the journal Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery titled Creating a Biological Breast Implant with an Omental Fat Augmented Free Flap. I'm joined by lead author, Dr. Young Wen. Thanks for joining me today. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be here. I'm Dr. Young Nguyen. I'm a reconstructive microsurgeon and director of breast reconstruction at the Stanford Women's Cancer Center. Perfect. Well, now I don't have to do your introduction. (laughs) (laughs) And we can jump right into how you became interested in the idea of creating an alternative breast reconstructive method. Well, breast reconstruction has advanced significantly in the last decade, and for the majority of our patients, we are now able to recreate natural and aesthetic breasts after mastectomy using implants in the patient's own tissues. Um, However, the options for women who are thin and very physically active are still pretty limited. And this was the main motivation behind creating this alternative option of breast reconstruction. Um, One of our breast uh, oncology surgeon, Dr. Irene Wabner, and I had a mutual patient who was diagnosed with recurrent breast cancer who needed to undergo a mastectomy. And she's a healthcare provider, super busy and an active individual who really did not want to have an implant-based reconstruction due to its potential associated complications and the need for long-term maintenance. And so Dr. Wabner and I discussed the possibility of using her omentum for reconstruction. And I've used the omentum many times before for other types of reconstruction and could see that um, it has potential for breast reconstruction. So um, from our discussion, I was really inspired and did some research and I reviewed the omentum anatomy and then looked into the published literature on similar applications to see how we can actually make this work. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that you used omentum for other types of reconstruction. Yes, we have been using um, omentum for decades um, for all types of reconstruction, like um, sternal wound reconstruction, scalp reconstruction, lower extremity. It's a very versatile sheet of healthy tissue that um, can help heal wounds and, and, um, and cover defects. So many things I never knew about Omentum. I see from the author information that this was an all-female team, yet it spans several surgical subspecialties. Was that intentional or did it just work out that way? In designing the reconstructive process, we needed a team. I mean, breast reconstruction, in my opinion, requires a team effort to achieve the optimal outcome. And in this case, it's a team sport. Yes, it definitely is a team sport. And in this case, we need um, a breast surgeon, that's Dr. Wabner, who is performing the mastectomy, and then preserving a healthy mastectomy skin pocket for the reconstruction. And then we have Dr. Yulia Zak or Dr. Monica Dua, who are our laparoscopic surgeons, um, who will work concurrently with us to remove the omentum laparoscopically. And then during this entire time, uh, I'm preparing the tissue pocket and then harvesting the fat. So everyone's role in this is really important in the success of the operation. Awesome. I think the abdominal free flap is the breast reconstruction method we're most familiar with. Uh, How does it compare with the omentum method? In both techniques, it uses the patient's own tissue. So we do need to take the tissue from another part of the patient's body and then transferring to the site for reconstruction and then reconnecting the blood vessels. So in that sense, both reconstructive um, techniques are similar. What's different is where the tissue is coming from. So for the abdominal base reconstruction, like the deep flap, the tissue is coming from the lower abdominal skin and fat tissue below the belly button. Whereas in the omentum, the tissue is coming from inside the abdomen, from the sheet of um, fat tissue called the omentum. 
But harvesting of the abdominal flap is a large incision, whereas the omentum harvesting is done laparoscopically. Does that make a difference in recovery time? It certainly did. And that's one of the things that we uh, observed. With the abdominal base reconstruction, there is a long incision because the tissue is coming from the skin and the fat. And so incision has to be made to remove that tissue. The blood vessels has to be dissected through the muscle. So sometimes the muscle um, will have to be sacrificed or taken with the reconstruction in order to provide a healthy flap. Whereas the omentum, because the entire um, sheet of tissue can be taken out laparoscopically uh, through small incisions in the abdominal wall, the patient doesn't have a long um, surgical recovery time because of less healing time, um, as well as no violation of the abdominal wall muscle. So uh, the recovery uh, time and, and the ability to return back to work um, is much quicker, and that's what we observed. Oh, wow. An improved recovery time is definitely appealing. The results of breast reconstruction using the deep flap have excellent patient satisfaction scores. Are you finding that the patients receiving the omental flap reconstructive method are similarly happy with their reconstructed breasts? Um, currently, um, we have performed over 50 breast reconstruction using this technique. And we, as well as the patients, have been very happy with the reconstructive results. Um, the outcomes have been very favorable. The breasts stay soft and natural, just like an abdominal flap reconstruction. Um, and it moves like the patient's own tissue. So in terms of outcome, uh, how natural the tissue is and how natural the reconstruction is, is comparable to an abdominal base reconstruction because it is made out of the patient's own tissue as well. That's great. So you actually led me right to my next question. This paper describes your first three patients in 2019 and 2020. You said you've now performed more than 50. Uh, how has you know your research grown over the past two years and where do you think you will go next? What we have seen, we've found several exciting findings through our research and, and, and through um, our clinical experience with this technique. Well, we expect that patients will likely to do better postoperatively compared to other tissue type reconstruction, which we did observe. But what was exciting and very surprising was that all of the patient has significantly less postoperative pain mm. uh, throughout their hospitalization, as well as requiring a lot less narcotic postoperatively. That's great. In the range of 50% to less. Wow. And um, these are very ex exciting findings because that helps us to basically explore this further to see how we can optimize this technique and expand the approach to perhaps um, more indications so that we can have the benefit of these post-operative um, um, results. As you know, this procedure was originally designed for unilateral breast reconstruction in thin women with low BMI. That was right. But what we found was that this procedure also works really well for women with higher BMI and in bilateral reconstruction because the omentum actually has dual blood supply and it can be split in half. Oh, wow. So actually more than half of our cases were bilateral and in women with normal or larger BMI. That's great. So our goal in the future is to explore further and see how we can optimize the reconstruction to achieve a larger range of breast size. Because I think if we can reliably create a full range of breast sizes using this technique, we can possibly hope to replace the need for synthetic implants in the future, which would be amazing for, for many patients. Yes, that would be fantastic. I'm you know, thinking about my own breasts and I'm you know, a D cup and I'm just like, I don't know if I have enough momentum for that, but I would really, if I ever have to have a mastectomy, I don't think I would love to go through the abdominal flap uh, recovery time. So this is, th that's very exciting uh, for our, the larger chested women. <laughs> yes. 
The largest size that we can create currently using this technique is about 450 cc, which is reasonable. Um, but we're hoping to be able to define the upper limit of this type of reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And so, so one of the major um, findings that we have through our through our investigation, our research, and with this technique is that that, that graph that we use to inject into the omentum. Mm -hmm. retains almost 100% based on post-operative imaging and 3D reconstruction to assess the post-operative volume compared to how much we put in at the time of reconstruction. So this is a really uh, exciting finding for us because fat retention rate using fat graft alone in the absence of the omentum in the literature is only about 30 to 60%. Wow. So that, that is big news. Do you have any idea what is causing the higher retention rate? Well, we think that it's because the omentum, which serves as a very vascularized, that means it contains a lot of blood vessels in this sheet mm -hmm. of, of tissue, which provides a vascular scaffold for the fat graft to take. Um, it helps to revascularize the free fat that we inject into it. Where does the free fat come from? We uh, obtain the free fat um, through liposuction um, at varying sites on the patient's body. So patient can have an opportunity, a side benefit of, of getting rid of their unwanted body fat elsewhere. And we can <laughs> use that for their breast reconstruction. Fantastic. And you, I guess, um, I'm trying to think how you would describe this implant. It, uh, you have, I guess, the, the fat, and then is it surrounded by the omentum? And then you have this sort of like a skin-like, you call it an acellular dermal matrix surrounding it, and that's how it becomes an implant, sort of yes. looking... You got it. <laughs> so the concept behind it is we want to to create and mimic as an implant, but essentially just using the patient's own tissue. So we would need a shell to hold the content. And in this case, um, I use a skin-derived product um, called a cell dermal matrix. It's uh, basically derived from a donor at one point that's been processed to remove all the donor cells. So it's just a scaffold um, that uh, the patient's own tissue will integrate into it over mm -hmm. the course of several weeks. So I use that to create a tissue pocket um, to mm -hmm. hold the omentum, which serves as a vascular scaffold, as we talked about. And we, because we know that a lot of times women don't have enough omental volume to give them the size that they that we want to achieve. So mm -hmm. we supplement that with the patient's own fat through fat grafting, which is taken by liposuction. And that is injected into this omental flap. And everything is then contained within this tissue pocket. Um, and the whole construct is then revascularize what that means is the blood vessel to the omentum is reconnected to the patient's own blood vessels on their chest and the entire construct becomes alive and um, it's uh, has a pulse it's warm and ultimately as it heals it will move like the patient's own tissue how cool that it has a pulse yeah and so that's why uh we give it the name Omental Fat Augmented Free Flap. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, I'm going back to the original question of how you got interested in this breast reconstructive method. I'm just, I'm astounded, amazed, uh, impressed by your willingness um and courage to just go and try something new is that something that you always had in you like you always thought you've always been creative you've always wanted to be innovative and try new things or uh i mean how did you i, I feel like most people would have a, a huge kiss of imposter syndrome here 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think for me, I mean, I love to be in a very stimulating environment. And I'm really fortunate to work in a place that's surrounded by really talented colleagues. When we're confronted with a challenge, such as um, in this situation, coming up with a solution for a problem that doesn't exist, it's it's very um, uh, inspiring and um, stimulating for me to be able to collaborate and share ideas with colleagues. And in that process, um, innovation happens. And I think this is uh, an example of that. I mean, I've always liked to problem solve and to look at ways to improve um, things that we're currently doing or to come up with solutions for things that we don't have um, solutions for. Um, but it's much more enjoyable and fruitful when you have colleagues um, that can uh, collaborate with you. And the outcome, I think, is is much better. That's fantastic. I, I'm You can't tell, but I'm smiling right now. <laughs> So we're coming up on our 20 minute mark. So I wanted to ask you one last question. And that is that I think Stanford is currently the only center in the nation doing this type of breast reconstruction. Is that correct? Yes, we are currently the only center um, in the country or the world that does this technique. However, we have been training fellows and uh, two of our fellows are actually in the community and are looking to offer this option for their patients as well. Fantastic. Uh, we're actively involved also at professional conferences to basically share our results and our techniques um, so that this may become a more mainstream reconstructive options for all patients around the country and elsewhere. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And to all our listeners, thank you for tuning in. We want to hear what you think of Scrubcast. You can email us at scrubcast at stanford.edu or hit us up on Twitter at Stanford Surgery. If you like Scrubcast, please share it with your friends. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you really like us, smash that five-star review. Scrubcast is a production of Stanford University's Department of Surgery. Today's episode was produced by Rachel Baker. The music is by Midnight Rounds. And our chair is Dr. Mary Hong.